Love staying informed? Subscribe now and get unlimited access to local news, weather, and sports for just 99 cents a month for your first three months at DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join. Read every story, listen to every podcast, and download the apps that keep you informed on the go 24 hours a day. So head to DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join right now to subscribe. What are you waiting for? You'll get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month at DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join. Hello Northlanders, it's Friday, February 17th. I'm Wyatt Buckner with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S., Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. It's Friday, and if you're looking for some fun weekend ideas, Duluth News Tribune arts and entertainment reporter Jay Gabler has some options in this week's Best Bets. Usually in Best Bets, we talk about events like concerts, festivals, plays. There's, of course, some of that happening this weekend in the Northland, but I wanted to highlight four exhibits, things that hang on the wall and stay in place, and you have to find a time to go see. There are four different shows that are well worth checking out right now happening in the Northland. One of them is at the University of Wisconsin Superior's Kruk Gallery. It's a show of letterpress pieces by the company Warrior Printress that is a duo based in Duluth and yes their name is inspired by the iconic TV show Xena Warrior Princess. Their work is on display right now at the University of Wisconsin Superior including quotes from drag culture that highlight affirmation, activism, inspiration, and collaboration. Over here in Duluth at Zeitgeist there is a display for Black History Month put together by Duluth's Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial which is not just a physical space, but an organization working to foster racial justice and promote healing and reconciliation in our community. The exhibit is all about the history of Black Duluthians, and it's called The Life, the Work, the Fight, Black Duluth in History. It's a fascinating exhibit. At Prove Gallery in downtown Duluth, there's going to be an exhibit containing paintings, digital illustrations, and mixed media work by artists Miri Villard and Carla Hamilton. The exhibit is called Waiting for Beds because it's a bunch of work that challenges the concept of waiting for a bed. That's the phrase used in social services and healthcare to describe the situation of people in crisis who need services that aren't available. The artists say it's connected to desensitization around people in crisis and their emergencies. Some very thoughtful work on display now at Prove Gallery in downtown Duluth. And then up the hill just a little ways at Duluth's American Indian Community Housing Organization, there is a show of work by two artists, the photographer Nada Ness Rose Green and the digital artist Caitlin Nuago. So Nada Rose Green has some amazing photography, iconic imagery drawing on, rich traditions, stunning vistas, and quiet moments of beauty. And then Caitlin Nuago on the other side of the gallery has work that's modernizing traditional Ojibwe floral designs in a series of pieces that use color and pattern to mesmerizing effect. Those are just four different shows you can check out right now in Duluth and Superior. You can read more about those shows and other best bets for the week at DuluthNewsTribune.com. I'm Jay Gabler. Now, here's a look at today's headlines. The small, octagonal object flying over Lake Huron on Sunday appeared to have strings hanging below it before it was shot down, according to cockpit audio of the two F-16 pilots from the Minnesota Air National Guard's Duluth-based 148th Fighter Wing that responded. The Detroit News confirmed the authenticity of the audio with a U.S. Air Force spokesperson Wednesday. The audio was first reported by The War Zone, a military news site. One of the pilots said, quote, It's almost like an octagonal shape. I'm going to call it a balloon. I'm able to see strings hanging down below it, but I don't see anything below it. It's pretty small, I don't know, like the size of a four-wheeler or something, end quote. The pilots can be heard in the 14-minute audio clip trying to see and describe the object. At one point, one of the pilots said he had a tone at three miles. A tone indicates a missile has locked onto a target. Eventually, 
One of the F-16s would down the object, which was flying at an altitude of about 20,000 feet with a missile. The object fell into a deep area of Lake Huron and likely in Canadian waters. A search for it is underway. It was the third unidentified object shot down over the US and Canada in as many days. The shootdowns come after a Chinese spying balloon was brought down February 4th off the coast of South Carolina after crossing much of the country. The missile that downed the object wasn't the only missile fired by the F-16 Sunday. The first missed, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters Tuesday. All three objects shot down last week and have yet to be recovered. To listen to the audio of the F-16 pilots yourself, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com. ST Paper in Duluth began its production of commercial bath tissues, paper towels, and napkins January 20th, a return of activity to the plant previously occupied by Verso Corporation. The City of Duluth and Duluth Economic Development Authority were instrumental in securing financial incentives and job training funds necessary to ensure that the mill could be successfully purchased and restarted by ST Paper. The largest modification to the ST Paper Mill, located at 100 North Central Avenue, was the installation of a new machine to make commercial-grade bath tissues, paper towels, and napkins for the away from home market. Beginning production also required firing up equipment that had been idle since 2018 to turn recycled paper into the pulp that is used for the production of the tissue paper. Recycled fiber is collected through brokers that collect recycled paper from around the Midwest. The paper is baled and transported via truck to the Duluth Mill, where it is unloaded and put through a process to remove contaminants such as garbage, ink, glass, and sand. The pulp slurry from the recycled fiber is sent to the paper machine, where the diluted mixture is sprayed onto a forming fabric. It is pressed, dried, and rewound into the finished product. The machine will produce over 200 tons of tissue, towel, or napkin paper a day. The rolls that are produced on the machine are 210 inches wide before being cut in half and rewound at 72 inches in diameter. These large parent rolls are sold and shipped via semi-trailer to companies that will convert them into the products to be used in public restrooms or possibly for household use. Residents in Duluth's Lakeside Lester Park neighborhood are banding together to oppose the Minnesota Department of Transportation's proposed roundabout at the intersection of London Road and 60th Avenue East. A group of about a dozen residents have started a petition and Facebook group to gather support for their movement. The Preserve the Gateway group has about 100 members. Organizer Carrie Battisti, who lives near the intersection, said there are well over 100 signatures on their petitions so far, which are available at Superior Street Business's Marshall Hardware, Hannah Johnson Fabrics, Amity Coffee, and Lake Superior Brewing Company. The intersection is included in MnDOT's $17 million London Road Preservation Plan, which was presented to the public in October. Roundabouts are proposed on London Road at 26th, 40th, and 60th Avenues East. Batiste said the Preserve the Gateway group is made up of residents near the University Park intersection who have concerns about MnDOT's plan. A 2021 MnDOT survey of the neighborhood identified the three biggest problems at the 60th Avenue intersection as pedestrian crossings, left turns, and high speeds, especially from South bound Highway 61 traffic. Preserve the Gateway met with MnDOT at the end of January to share their concerns about a roundabout in their neighborhood. The group hopes to collect as many signatures as possible before they meet with MnDOT again in early March. Now here's a look at your forecast brought to the News Tribune's 20 Under 40 Awards. Today's forecast for the Duluth area, mostly sunny but chilly with a high temperature into the mid-20s. Southwest winds around 5 to 10, increasing, becoming a little gustier during the afternoon. For tonight, becoming mostly cloudy and not as chilly, with temps only dropping into the 20s. Winds will be out of the west as strong as 15 to 25 miles an hour. And for Saturday, partly sunny with temps likely warming a little bit above freezing. There will be a chance of a little light snow come Sunday. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to the 20 Under 40 Awards for their support. Now is your chance to nominate someone younger than 40 who's making a positive impact in our Northland. Nominations are open through February 28th. Submit yours at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash 20 Under 40. Reporting for today's episode was done by Jimmy Lovren, Brielle Bredsten, and Laura Butterbrot. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.